Hello everyone myself Dr Parth Goswami and today I am going to teach you about lupus nephritis So friends we know very well that systemic lupus erythematosus is a autoimmune disorder of our body it can affect multiple organs in our body right it's a autoimmune disorder and multiple systems in our body is involved one of the system that is involved in sle is a kidney so the kidney involvement in sle is known by the name lupus nephritis so let's begin the discussion of lupus nephritis in the detail so obviously simply it's a kidney change in the sle the kidney change in the systemic lupus erythematosus is known by the name lupus nephritis and you might be surprised friends that in the systemic lupus erythematosus patient 50% patient will have the kidney involvement and it's a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction the pathogenesis is immune complex formation here the antibody will form against the nuclear antigen our nucleus is consisting of dna so here the antibody will form again the against our double stranded dna and this particular antibody will bind to the our nuclear antigen and they will form a immune complex which will get deposited in the glomerulus and it will induce is type 3 hypersensitivity reaction because of which complement systems are activated and leukocytes also get activated which can lead to glomerular injury so that is the pathogenesis of lupus nephritis right all right now our main focus is to understand the morphology of kidney involvement in the sle we will discuss the other aspects of sle in our separate lecture about the systemic lupus erythematosus so let's focus only on the morphology of kidney involved in the sle so in the lupus nephritis there could be six group of morphological classification six type of morphological changes has been observed and you might be surprised that none of the morphological group is specific for sle right none none of the group is specific but these changes are seen can be seen in the systemic lupus erythematosus so the first group is class 1 the name is minimal messenger lupus nephritis here in this particular class 1 the immune complex deposition is present in the mesangium portion right we know very well that in the glomerulus there is a presence of gbm endothelial cells right mesangial cells mesangial matrix so the immune complex here deposited in the mesangium and it can be seen only by immunofluorescence microscopy right light microscopy is totally normal you can demonstrate it only by immunofluorescence microscopy in which it appear as a granular deposit so as the light microscopy is normal the name given is minimal mesangial lupus nephritis right because the changes are minimal in light microscopy the second group class 2 is a mesangio proliferative lupus nephritis here also the immune complex deposition is present in the mesangium but the light microscopy will show the increased mesangial cell and mesangial matrix so it suggests that there is a mesangial proliferation and that's why the name given is mesangio proliferative lupus nephritis that is class 2 all right in the class 3 category of lupus nephritis there is a focal proliferative type of lupus nephritis it is seen in 20 to 35% patient of sle right 20 to 35% patient will show this change the name focal means only the part of glomerulus is involved and there is a morphology of proliferative glomerulo nephritis that's why the name given is focal proliferative lupus nephritis and if you have seen my previous lectures of proliferative nephritic syndrome then you can remember that in the proliferative glomerulo nephritis there is a proliferation of all the type of cell that is of mesangial cell endothelial cell right and the epithelial cell all will get proliferated that's why the name proliferative glomerulo nephritis is given here additionally fibrinoid necrosis and intracapillary thrombus can be seen as well so that is a class 3 class 4 lupus nephritis in this particular class 4 lupus nephritis group there is also a proliferative glomerulo nephritis right here also the morphology is of proliferative glomerulo nephritis means increase mesangial cell increase endothelial cell and increase epithelial cell but the 
involvement is not focal the involvement is diffuse diffuse means more than 90% of the glomerulus of kidney is involved means all the glomerulus of the kidney will show the changes right and you know this is a very severe form of lupus, nep lupus nephritis 35 to 60 percent patient of SLE will demonstrate this particular type of lupus nephritis and the prognosis is not very good in this particular class 4 you know sometimes crescent can also form in such uh, proliferative lupus nephritis we know very well that in the proliferative lupus nephritis crescent formation can be present which is known by the name rapidly proliferative glomerulonephritis so if the crescent is formed then prognosis is very poor right so that is the diffuse proliferative lupus nephritis all right now what do you mean by wire loop lesion so in this particular category of proliferative lupus nephritis whether it is a focal or diffuse in the proliferative lupus nephritis class 3 and 4 sometime wire loop lesion can be seen it is it is seen due to sub endothelial deposit of the immune complex right there will be prominent sub endothelial deposit which can which will lead to homogeneous thickening of glomerular capillary wall and that's why it give the appearance like that of wire loop lesions in the light microscopy we will see the diagram of that later on in the slide right it is due to sub endothelial prominent sub endothelial deposit of immune complex all right the fifth class is membranous lupus nephritis it is seen in 10 to 15 percent of the patient of sle here the name itself suggests there will be diffuse thickening of glomerular basement membrane glomerular capillary wall will be diffuse thickened and that's why the name membranous lupus nephritis is given final category is advanced sclerosing lupus nephritis class 6 the name itself suggests here there is a mark sclerosis there is a advanced sclerosis in greater than 90 percent of glomeruli it's like that of end stage disease right there is a mark you know uh, sclerosis in the glomerulus that's why the name sclerosing lupus nephritis is given now in this particular diagram you can see that there is only a part of glomerulus is involved right the whole glomerulus is not involved and you can see a proliferative type of nephritis so here this particular diagram showing a changes of focal proliferative lupus nephritis which is class 3 category if you see this right sided diagram then you can see a marked proliferation in the glomerulus and the involvement is diffuse that's why it's a class 4 category of lupus nephritis and in this particular lower image you can see a diffusely thickened glomerular capillary like that of wire loop and that's why it is known by the name wire loop lesion in the light microscopy it is seen in class 3 and class 4 category of lupus nephritis thank you very much guys and this is all about the lupus nephritis we will be right back with a new video till then take care and bye bye